Okay, last week my video was on the subject uh, of how to get $10 million worth of listings in your first year. And as I explained, I actually didn't do it my first year. It took a year to figure out the method. <clears throat> I went through the five steps that I used to, to get this achieved. And what I wanted to do today was concentrate on step number one. And that is to choose who you want to do business with or who you want to work with. I use Birmingham as an example. Um, we have somewhere in the neighborhood of 460,000 homes or um, families in homes in Birmingham. I don't want to deal with all of them. <clears throat> I have actually chosen to do, deal with the top end of it. And, and that is $750,000 or more. Uh, and I'm, I chose that because of a, a very specific reason and some economic situations that have occurred that make it um, an opportunity. I'm a retired financial advisor and I was taught that if there's a market inefficiency, um, there is an economic opportunity. And the market inefficiency in the luxury home market is being created by the baby boomer sell-off. Um, there were 79 million of us baby boomers born between 1946 and 1964. Uh, we basically drove all elements of the economy for, for our lifetime and we continue to uh, because we are so large. The issue comes to play though that there are two other economic situations that occurred that are making it difficult for the baby boomers to sell their luxury homes and they own 75 percent of the luxury homes in in the united states so those two economic situations one of them occurred on uh, may 9th or the start of it anyway may 9th in 1960 and that was when the food and drug administration okayed the sale of the first birth control pill as a result of that Generation X is 25% smaller than the baby boomer generation. So you've got baby boomers turning 65 starting in January, or excuse me, July 2015 um, at the rate of 9,000 a day. Uh, they want to downsize. They want to move to be closer to their grandchildren. They want to change their lifestyle. They don't need the big house they had. And they have big houses. Starting in the 90s, they started building big homes uh, behind uh, the gates of um, many times uh, golf course and tennis communities and swimming communities. They wanted the safety and, and they're usually a little bit away from the, the downtown community. So now they're retiring. They're trying to sell their homes. Generation X is 25% smaller because of the birth control pill. And then Generation X bought their first home in the late 90s or the early 2000s at actually the peak of the real estate market. So they bought at the, the highest prices you can imagine. And then uh, starting in 2008, we went into the subprime crisis and we had uh, those Generation Xers who just bought their houses. If they were lucky, they lost their equity. If they were not so lucky, um, they lost their homes. And if they were really unlucky, um, they lost their jobs and their homes. So they're gun shy, and, and rightfully so. They're gun shy about moving into the big homes. Then you have the millennials, and they're more interested in li living in the uh, gentrification neighborhoods of uh, downtown Birmingham. And um, they don't need as big, the, the, the big homes, nor do they desire the big homes. So we have an a, uh, economic um, market ineff inefficiency, which is creating an opportunity. Here in Birmingham, last year and actually since 2011, an average of $650,000, $750,000 or more homes come to market. Um, and less than a half of them sell. They sit on the market. Yesterday I saw a home come, uh, was under canceled, and it, had been on, it has been on the market for 14 years. Uh, with the same real estate agent. Um, and they continue to do the same thing. So here is the philosophy that I use in and, and, and the driving force of choosing who I want to work with. I want to work with these people because they they are having a problem selling their home. And in the 
the, the selling process, if you really want to be successful, what you first look for is someone who is in pain. Someone who owns a luxury home, their house has been on the market more than 200, and, say 200 days, 180, more than a, year, a half a year, and they don't know why. Uh, they quite honestly don't know about the baby boomer sell-off. You don't read about this in the newspaper. They don't report it on, on the evening news that, uh, that the reason your house isn't selling is because there are twice as many for sale as what, are, as what there are buyers. So they're in pain. What they're looking for is a solution to their problem. I just explained to you the problem. Um, so we should probably put problem here. They're looking for a solution. You can explain to them the problem and then you can offer them a solution. Where do you play in this story? Where are you? You're the guide. They're the hero. They're the hero in this story and they're traveling through this problem uh, searching for a solution so they can reach happiness. And happiness is a sold sign in their front yard so they can move on with their life. So you come in not as, not as the save all, you explain to them, this is the problem and this is why you're having the problem. Once someone understands why they're having a problem, then finding the solution becomes much easier. Well, what is the solution? Well, twice as many, 650 are on the market, 320 of them sell, the solution is your house has got to be one of the top 50% on the market. And that means price, presentation, and location. And if you don't have those things all in line, there is not going to be a solution. You will be in the same situation as the lady I just told you about, whose uh, house has been on the market for 14 years. Started at 1.4 million is down to $950,000. They're searching for a solution uh, and, they're, and they're doing it um, uh, through the use of, of price. If you looked at the site, you would see they, they've got the pictures that they put up 14 years ago. Um, they aren't even full size. Uh, they have not recognized that 90% of all showings are first seen on Zillow or Trula. And those are the pictures. And if you don't impress them there, they, they, they aren't going to come knock on your door. So you need to explain that solution. Then beyond that, the solution has to be, what are you going to do different? I was just on a listing appointment yesterday, <clears throat> and I got it. $750,000 home on a lake. Very nice home. And as I finished the listing appointment, I asked uh, the husband and wife, I said, why did you choose me? And um, he went on to say that they actually had interviewed five agents. And the, it, it came down to, he said to me, it came down to this, Carrie. He said, some of them didn't impress me. One guy pulled up and actually took the, a sign out of the backyard and a mallet and suggested that we sign the papers and I'll go put this in your front yard. And he told him, no, I don't think so. I don't think we're going to do this. Uh, this was a guy who actually knew the, the homeowner and just assumed it was going to be his listing. Didn't work out for him. Um, he said there was a lady who, who was a very predominant agent here in the city. And he asked her, uh, what are you going to do to sell my home? And she looked at him surprised and she said, sir, you don't understand. I won't sell your home. There's a 90% probability that another agent, a buyer's agent, will come in and sell your home. I'm a listing agent. I'm going to put a sign in your front yard and I'm going to create an MLS listing. And then I'm going to push that listing all out through the internet and make people aware of your home. And he said, yeah, I understand that. And I understand everybody does that. But what are you going to do to actually sell my home? What are you going to do to advertise it and promote it and identify the potential buyers? And she said, you don't understand. I'm a listing agent. It's a buyer's agent who's going to come into the house and sell your home. And he asked her, he said, well, she has no knowledge of my home, correct? No, most likely not, because they're going to just 
come in through the lockbox. We do it through our phone now, um, and, um, and and view the house, and they'll sell the home. He said, okay, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for stopping by, and that was it. He said, Kerry, I realized I can list the house myself, he said to me. He says, what I need is a salesman. I need somebody who's going to sell the house, and that's what I have built my plan around. My plan is very simple. It is, we will stage your home, get it properly set up to sell. We will then <clears throat> identify who your potential buyer is, and I'll get into that a, a little later in my next, one of my other videos. Um, we'll identify them, we'll advertise directly to them through social media. Um, we won't do a, a social media blast we know for a $750,000 home, the, your, your potential buyer is probably living in a five hundred dollars to $600,000 home, probably within a three hundred or a three mile radius of your home. So we're gonna find out who those people are and then advertise directly through the, to them through social media. And again, I'll get into that. So I have a plan. If you don't have a plan <clears throat> for how to get out of pain, you're not going to get this. You're not going to get the listing. You're just competing with everybody else. Think about it like this: If you had a toothache, a really severe toothache, and you went to the dentist and he said, "Well, you got a problem. I'm sure not. I'm not sure what the solution is. We'll probably have to bring another dentist in, and he'll probably find the solution." Um, and no, I don't have a plan. You're probably going to go find another dentist. Um, and that's where I think real estate is going. Sure, there are some homes that have come onto the market for $150,000 in a neighborhood. And as, as I've heard somebody say, a dead realtor could, could sell that. But that is not happening as a result of the baby boomer sell-off. And this is where the economic opportunity lies. So <clears throat> I choose who I want to do business with. It's driven by the baby boomer sell-off. I use my uh, MLS software. We use Paragon. I go to it every morning at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I open up that little section on the right-hand side um, that says market activity. Now, I have there's a widget up there that I have it already geared that it shows me the market activity in the four zip codes that I want to deal with. I then go to it where it says uh, hot list. And I click and it shows me anywhere from 100 to 200 activities that occurred in my price range or in, in my zip codes. Uh, over, it looks like they do it like every 48 hours. <clears throat> so from there, uh, I go through and I, I want to know what's selling and where it's selling. So I kind of start at the bottom with the highest priced houses and I click through and see what's happening. What I'm looking for most definitely is the expired and canceled listings. I want to find the people in pain and that's the people whose listings expired. They gave it to an agent and the agent held it and now it's expired and they haven't renewed. So I wanna, I wanna focus on them. Over the last year, I have built a list of roughly uh, 268, not roughly, exactly, 268 people who not only are expired, but also have been, uh, their, markets, their house has been on the market more than 200 days. What I know <clears throat> of the houses that have been on the market more than 200 days and are still active is that 70% of them are going to expire or cancel within the next uh, 100 days. So I want to be knowledgeable of them. So I put them on my list. Um, and it is geared, as I said, to the specific zip codes that I want to work in. What I do then is I write them a letter. The first line in the letter is always the same. John and Mary, are you puzzled why your house didn't sell over the last, when I wrote just yesterday, over the last 14 years. Are you puzzled why you're, I think I know why. And I basically go through and say that the first thing I tell them 
is that this this was a nine hundred thousand dollar house that in your market area there are less than 150 out of the 5,000 agents in our community that have ever sold a house for more than $750,000. This may be shocking to you, but this is true. Less than 150 agents who have ever sold a house for over $750,000 in your neighborhood. So it would make sense that I would market your house to those 150 agents. When, how would I market it to them? I would send them a video. I would send them an eight minute walkthrough video of your house that they could see so that when they get a buyer, they'll, they'll know what your house looks like already. That's kind of a no brainer, don't you think? That you market to the buyer's agent? Yeah, I think it is. Um, then, I'm, then I'm going to, in, in the letter, uh, I'm, I'm going to say, that there's a 80% or 60% probability that your future buyer is going to live currently within a three mile radius of your house. Well, now why is that so? <laughs> and it's so because you don't wanna change churches. You don't wanna change synagogues. You don't want to change grocery stores. And God help you if you have to change hairdressers. So you stay within your community that you're comfortable with. So 60% of all homes that sell in the United States sell to someone who currently lives within three mile radius of their home. Well now, okay, Carrie, I know that they're three mile, but I'm not gonna knock on every door in the neighborhood or in the three mile radius. No, no, go to your Paragon, enter into Paragon, sold. Then put um, $500,000 to, let's say we're 700 or, or a $900,000 home, 700,000, um, to $850,000. And then go down here and put the dates um, from 2012 back. And you're going to get a list of something in the neighborhood of maybe, um, oh, 3,000 homes that sold in that neighborhood, in that three mile radius. Um, and, the, and the people have been in their house for over six years. We know for a fact that 80% of all homes that um, are sold, the people have lived in for more than, more than uh, five years. So those are your potential buyers. We already have segregated them relative to price range and, and the length of time in the house. Now in Paragon, <clears throat> it's going to give me um, the house address and um, the um, a price that it's sold sold for. I want to take out all duplicates because I want to end up with the end owner. But I, what I don't have is their their name. So I go to the tax records and I pull up all the tax records in the Pacific zip codes that I'm looking for. Then I take my Paragon list and my tax record list and I merge them together. And voila, right there, the two addresses come together and right next to it is their tax record name. So now I have the names of those 3,000 potential buyers in this neighborhood that are probably 60% probability going to buy the house. Okay, what do I do with that? <clears throat> I, I, can't, I can't direct mail every one of them. That's, you know, that, that's expensive. But what I can do, and I'll get into this more, is I can create a custom audience um, inside of Facebook made up of those 3,000 names that I got off of Paragon and, and the tax list. And I can tell Mark Zuckerberg, these are my custom audience. These are people that I have a relationship with. And I want to put my Facebook ad for my house on their timeline. And Mark's requirement is that I have a relationship with them. And what I just told you constitutes a relationship. So <clears throat> I choose who I want to do business with. I identify them and then I choose them. And then once I get their listing, I give them a plan that tells them how I'm going to market the house to their potential buyers 
And what I'm going to use, modern technology, meaning video, uh, uh, the professional photography, Facebook advertising, I'll put it the same ad on LinkedIn advertising. Once I get these people's names, eventually I'm going to get their email addresses. I'll do an email a blast and I'll put that ad out to them. I just did an ad that I really liked. I saw, I was watching a TV commercial and it was for a Mercedes and it showed this empty parking lot and it said, what does a Mercedes that you can buy for $345 a month look like? And it was an empty parking lot. And whoop, in zips a silver Mercedes. Whoop, in zips a second one and it's red. And they said, you can buy this house. Or excuse me, this Mercedes for $345. And what I realized is they weren't trying to sell me a car. <laughs> they were selling me a payment. And a car came with it. And I just ran some ads, but the same way, on a $890,000 home. Uh, $44,000 down and $4,900 a month. I'll let you know how it turns out. So choose who you want to do business with. Don't just say, oh, I'll do business with everybody. You don't want it. Trust me, you don't want it. Let, that, let somebody else have that business. Choose who you want to do business with. Build a list. Find their pain, give the, understand their problem, give them a solution, give them a plan, and lead them to happiness. Happiness ever after. And you know the wonderful thing about this? They will tell all their friends and their neighbors about how this guy came and he turned our world around. And you know where they're going to tell it? On my website on a video. Because video is the way to reach people. Okay. Next time we're going to talk about, uh, let me think what was, uh, hang on. Next time we're going to talk about building your most wanted list. Uh, and I'm going to focus on the use of LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a, a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for you. Um, please subscribe to the video so as I put another one out, you get notified. Share it. Uh, I... I'm learning, so I think we are in an industry that is going to change phenomenally in the next 10 years. Um, don't be surprised if you're working for a broker that is totally digitalized, dig digital, that when you list a house, you take a video for it, of it, and they actually, let's call them who they are, Zillow, they actually set up the appointments for your house, for your showings. Don't be surprised to that. So you need to get in front of this. You need to get in front of it and be a part of it. So again, subscribe. The other thing I'm sharing with you is I'm writing a book and I'll have that out, I think, sometime in August. I'm going to meet with my editor in July and uh, we're going to put the final touches on it. So that's my approach, unique, I think, to, uh, to uh, selling luxury homes to taking charge over the baby boomer sell-off, which is creating an economic opportunity for you and me.